The Morgan Report with David Morgan. David Morgan of themorganreport.com for the week ending 18 March 2022. Well, as I say every week, if you uh, would care to get our free updates, I would suggest you get on the main landing page, themorganreport.com, give me a name and an email. That way, if I am deplatformed, which looks like it could happen, um, you'll be on our mailing list. And we do have other platforms we are on. Library, Odyssey, Rumble, I believe, several. And we, of course, would send you that by email. You can search. Uh, I know on Odyssey or Library, whatever it's called, we are there. First up this week, uh, talking generally about the stock market, but all things go in cycles. The real estate market goes up and down. Gold goes up and down. Commodities go up and down. So the overall theme here is how much the commodities index has accelerated here this year, as you can see. And the point to be made is not only are commodities surging, but that portends that stocks and stocks and bonds have probably peaked. Usually bonds peak and then stocks, and that appears to be the case. Um, you could go back to early 2020, probably the peak in the bond market. You could go to just a month or two ago and look at stocks so far. Is this a guarantee? No, but the trend is very clear and it's time to move out of the asset classes for mention and in the commodity cycle. Is it overextended at this point in time? Yes, it probably is. Overbought, it'll back and fill, but the trend has changed. This came in from a... Uh, reader or I should say a viewer of these weekly perspectives. If someone bought, and I think he's probably referring to himself, bought uh, silver 10, 12 years ago at $25 an ounce, in light of the massive inflation the past several years, they lost money since silver is still around 25, right? Is that correct? Yes. And if you are looking in terms of US dollars and you know it's flat for 10 years, we all know that $25 10 years ago purchased more than $25 today. So in that context, absolutely. However, that's a dollar-centric only model. And if you were looking in terms of other currencies like the Canadian dollar, the Australian dollar, uh, euros, whatever, you would find a different story. So not that uh, what you said isn't correct, but I want to put it in the context because number one, uh, the Morgan Report has viewers from around the world. Two, it depends on what currency we're talking about. And three, it's uh, a mechanism that the dollar is being defended on many levels. And now I think it's coming apart because of what's going on with the petrodollar. First thing is, if you go back, I think it was April last year, uh, when Saudi Arabia basically aligned with Russia to be their protection for their for their country basically so the u.s was always with the saudis as their protectorate and this is why oil could only be bought in u.s dollars that was the agreement now that shifted months ago and then on top of that with the swift system and the decay of cross-border payments taking place it looks like oil will be settled uh in yuan and other currencies and because of that fact, you're going to see a lot of pressure on the dollar to the downside. So let's see, he goes on to say, I digress, I'll come back. I'm a fan of silver, but it seems that silver holders lost quite a bit while gold holders have won. Yes, again, in U.S. terms and all currencies, uh, gold has outperformed in the time frame you're speaking of. Uh, can you address this in your YouTube video? Because I'm sure uh, other silver investors are thinking similarly. So I'll add on to that. I just did an interview with As Good As Gold Australia. It should be posted on our blog posts soon. I'll try to get it on our Twitter feed as well. And things are playing out pretty close to what I anticipate, which means as things deteriorate based on the petrodollar, you're going to see the run to gold. And the interview I accomplished last night, we went into some detail about the amount of gold that's being purchased by Australians. And I stated that I think this is the beginning of the run to gold. So the run to gold has started, as far as I can tell, which means that silver will catch up. In fact, it will probably catch up and exceed on a percentage basis. 
there's a lot to talk about in the silver market. Some of it um, borders on conspiracy. The facts are that silver is has a very difficult time going above 30. And there's a lot of reasons for that. But once it accomplishes 30, 33, once it's above 33 in U.S. dollars terms, there's not much holding it back. I think that line is drawn pretty hard, meaning that there'll be a lot of people defending that that U.S. dollar price. But regardless, the market can be overwhelmed and it probably will be depending on what takes place going forward with the U.S. dollar, the petrodollar, gold, and world tensions. So I wouldn't give up on silver, but certainly it has been a trial by fire for many of us, especially those that buy silver only, which as a lot of people, I understand, you know, that gold isn't affordable for everybody at these levels and that silver is supposed to do as good as gold, but it does it on a daily basis when even on, a, on an annual basis, as you point out. Last comment is something I mentioned in the interview with uh, As Good As Gold Australia, and that is that gold has had a compounded annual growth rate of over 10% a year, or roughly 10% a year. So 10%, compound that 10%, next year compound that 10%, next year compound that 10%. Is it a perfect line from the left to the right? No, it is not. All markets go up and down, as I said earlier. However, on a long-term basis, silver actually, over that same time frame, has gone, I think it's about 8% which isn't wonderful. And of course, we're stagnating, as you point out. But again, I think we have to be a little more patient. I say a little more. I don't think we have to worry too much longer because of the deterioration of the whole global economic system, political challenges, the war situation, and all that's going on in our lives. So gold is the number one safe haven. The run of gold has begun. Silver will follow. So I wouldn't want to see you sell out it you know, 25 after holding for 10 years, only to watch it go to 52 years from now. I'm wondering why you didn't hold on. Coming back to gold, technically, as we can see in this chart, uh, it's a trading view chart. I got it from Kitco, actually. And it shows this nice run up to gold at 2075, according to this chart. And we've been backing off, just like oil has been backing off. Oil and gold have been tracking each other pretty closely, and they are correlated pretty highly, actually. So we're back into this zone here, which is actually good strength because you can see it's a top here, it's a top here, and it's in that zone and probably will stay in that area and come back to the upside. Um, no guarantees, of course, but... Gold is doing a pretty good job here, as I just said, and silver will follow. So continuing on, I got an article here from uh, Ron Paul that I think it's actually written by Jordan. I won't butcher the last name, but it's from the <clears throat> Ron Paul website featured article here talking about what took place recently with uh, President of Ukraine talking to the U.S. types and the raw raw cheerleading and we've got to help them and and basically escalate the situation so i'm not going to read the whole article i beg you to read it and get at least a different perspective than maybe you hold it presently or maybe reaffirm what you already believe but you've got to look at both sides and use some critical thinking here so i highlighted parts that i think are that i do want to read to you so you know help us help us yes of course we will and then <clears throat> This author goes on to say, the Biden administration and Congress seem hell-bent on encouraging the war effort and have activated the big war machine without explaining what is exactly at stake for we the people, or even the Ukrainian people, who are very much a mixed bag of support between East and West. Goes on to talk, and then I highlighted that the Russian-Ukraine conflict is first and foremost a humanitarian issue. If we start to think about the situation through that lens, it may challenge the prevailing wisdom of sending infinite supplies of taxpayer-funded heavy weapons into a war zone, or even worse, maintaining a no-fly zone against the Russians, which is tantamount to starting World War III as it requires our forces to attack Russian territories to secure airspace over Ukraine. Let me digress and explain that a little bit. If you put a new fly, a no fly zone over that airspace and a Russian uh, fighter, bomber, whatever, 
It could be a passenger plane. Flies in that, gets shot down. Now you've got World War III. So just to be crystal clear. So no one wins in a war. And he goes on to say, for Americans, for Americans, the war in Ukraine should be perceived as a distant humanitarian challenge, which is best resolved by the parties coming to the table, agreeing to terms, and ending the war as soon as humanly possible. Of course, I concur. And this week, I'm going to end with uh, Gold Switzerland, Egan von Greitz, who um, had the pleasure of n- knowing and sitting next to here uh, not that long ago. Anyway, this is an article... <clears throat> The Perfect Gold Storm, I won't read it to you. What I find interesting is, you know, talking about the discredited paper markets and gold will continue to rise with the CPI noted inflation is. What's interesting to me is he's kind of joking about poking fun at Goldman Sachs, Jeff Curry, but Jeff Curry calls the current situation the perfect storm for gold. And that's interesting that uh, Goldman would say that, but of course it's true. Goldman's price target is 2500 which I think is conservative. I think that's where gold will go this year. And I think silver will have a similar rise percentage wise. So what five on uh, two is um, about 20%. So silver at uh, 25, 20% <clears throat> is five. So it'd be at 30. I think those are m- moderate uh, expectations could go higher, especially under the current conditions. Of course, they'll ebb and flow. A catalyst no one sees. As a holder of global reserve currency in the almighty USD, Washington has been able to export inflation and bully everybody else, basically. I think most of all of my work understand that. The de-dollarization I already talked about uh, earlier. This just confirms what I told you earlier in this weekly perspective. We're moving from a petrol-based dollar system to another one. The Fed's gone absolutely nuts with the amount of printing. I think everyone that follows me or this <clears throat> meme about honest money, gold, silver, financial problems all understand what's going on recession leverage will gold rise and gold does best actually during the deflation i won't go into that if you listen to me in the past you uh, probably have heard me talk about that so i'll wrap it up there this is david morgan of the morganreport.com with the weekly perspective for the week ending 18 march 2022